All right. How's it going, everyone? Uh, so today, uh, as always, I woke up in the morning on lecture day, and I was like, OK, what should we talk about today? Uh, and I think this is one topic that has actually been kind of coming up a lot in my life, uh, because a lot of people have been asking me for help, um, uh, or asking for help from me, which is kind of really interesting, because I've always been on the other side for so long. And uh, I kind of want to just start with, as always, uh, a quick story to contextualize things and kind of put it all in perspective for you all uh, on why this is important and honestly how I am not really even the guy that is the best in the world at asking for help, which maybe makes me someone that is good at, which maybe makes me kind of equipped to even talk about it a little bit because I'm still learning uh, on how to ask for help best and I think uh, I just want to share kind of my journey on how I asked for help and how it kind of improved my life. Um, I want to set a, a, a quick scene here. In 2014, I finished high school. I went into my Snapchat memories. I found this. So there I am. I finished high school. And I always wore the same shirts. Uh, so here's me on Snapchat in high school. When you think you have a million dollar idea, but can't work on it because of chem homework. So if you followed me in the 12th grade, you were getting stuff like this, right? So that's kind of like the scene. Um, and with all my heart at 18, I just did not want to go to college. Like with all my being, I didn't want to go because I was already kind of making some good amount of money selling shirts online. So I was happy with that. I wanted to keep on working on that. Um, but <laughs> hey, in 2018, I graduate college. And uh, I end up moving out to San Francisco. This is me, my brothers, my cousin, and my dad. Uh, at my San Francisco apartment. Uh, so again, even though I didn't want to go to college, I ended up graduating uh, for reasons. Can anybody guess? Parents, Parents, yes. Finally, I was free from the clutches of my Pakistani mother and father, uh, so I could, I could actually go out into the world. Um, and finally, I wouldn't dishonor my family by dropping out, right? Uh, so I kind of felt like, okay, like I can finally go out there. Um, college was pretty useless, uh, definitely even looking back, but some cool stuff still happened, right? For one, uh, I, got, I built some products. Uh, this is one product I built, uh, got about uh, 500K users in that first year, and I just checked last year, it is still getting 234,000 users as of, uh, as of 2023, which is pretty cool. Uh, and uh, I worked on some AI stuff, this is Deep League. Uh, again, just random shit I made that kind of got some people to notice me. I worked on self-driving cars, so I still, I still like, did stuff in college, right? Like, I still got to do other things, which was great. Um, but to kind of set the scene, that's where I was at the end of like, college, right? So that's like 2018. Um, uh, I had stuff. It was, some stuff was making money. Some stuff was big. Some stuff wasn't. Had some flops, et cetera, right? Uh, but I still really felt very, very stagnated by the end of, uh, of, of when I finished college, which was 2018, and uh, felt very alone had very little idea what to do next. I mean, most people who graduate, uh, who, have, who leave college, uh, generally don't have any idea what to do next. Um, and uh, I had no idea how to fix the problems that I even had. Like, I knew my own weaknesses, and I knew kind of where I kind of wanted to go, but like very, very, very loosely, but I still didn't quite know how to fix the problems that I had. Um, and uh, yeah, I had no one around me who I thought I could ask for help for these problems that I was, that I was having. Um, Everything from like, should I move to a different city? To uh, uh, how do I, does this next app idea have any good? You know, like questions like that. I'd always been so solo in my whole life up until this point. Like I'd never asked anybody for help ever. Like completely solo got to where I was. And again, I got to this point, which was decently okay point. But now I felt like, damn, like I kind of need, I have no one around to help me now. Like this is so sad. Um, on top of that, yeah, in 2018, I really did suck at asking for help because I felt like I had to conquer the world as a solo player. Uh, I felt like for some reason that was baked into my head. And uh, so I kind of realized this and I started to write a newsletter. Uh, I don't know why I started this even looking back, to be honest with you. Uh, I guess I was just feeling kind of hopeless in it all. And I was like, okay, at the very least, I'm doing stuff every week. Uh, let me just talk about it online at the very least, right? I didn't know what Twitter was. I didn't have an Instagram. I just had a Snapchat. And I was like, OK, I have a Snapchat, and I have uh, this email thing. So I'll talk about what I'm doing there. So I started to write the newsletter. Uh, I wrote it every week for nearly four years. So I was 
kind of hyper consistent on it. And uh, have any of you ever read my newsletter? I'm just curious who here. Great. Yeah, you're not missing out on much, eh, Alec? Um, but I can talk a little about the contents. It covered various things, this newsletter. Uh, this was my first newsletter ever, uh, Tuesday, November 13th, 2018. And I was working on this thing called Build Space, which was very different from what it is today. But this was way back when, like right after college. And uh, Build Space is a place where users can learn new things, mainly programming, by combining their interests with something that they enjoy. So that's what it was way back then. And you can see how many people are on the email list there, right? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's Alec. There's my dad. There's Sharif, uh, who you see walking around a lot. So kind of like the characters that you, uh, that characters in my life that I've just, these are the only people I felt like would care about what I was working on. Um, so I started. I then kept talking about stuff. I started talking about the anime I was watching. So Death Note, how many of you seen Death Note? Yeah, so in this email newsletter, I was talking about like uh, specific fan theories about Death Note. Um, specifically, you know, in Death Note, you write someone's name and they die. I was like, oh shit, that's a plot hole. What if someone doesn't have a name, right? How, do they die? And so I, I fucking Googled it. I went into like the Death Note Stack Exchange, got my answer. Like, no, actually, that person was automatically assigned, is automatically assigned a name 780 days in by a Shinigami. By, by a Shinigami. So again, based off even everything I'm saying right now, I was sometimes talking about just straight nonsense. Um, I talked about my ideas for stuff I had, stuff I could build in the future. So again, this is all 2018. Um, this was an idea that I had. Create a program that is able to scan programs for common mistakes using machine learning, um, and then kind of help the engineer find their problems faster, right? Um, I would also just be talking about stuff like uh, new ideas I had, right? So this was another idea I had called Kanga 2. Uh, and again, the kind of contents were like really vast, but it was, it was always like my life and what I was working on. So just to give you guys context, right? Initially, no one really gave a, gave a fuck, you know? Like, no one replied. Um, uh, I had my dad, you know, Buzzer Majid, so he would reply to a lot of them. So, you know, as long as you are top, Farzana, as long as you're on top of your shit, you have no regrets about short-term failures, you will find, you know, my dad being very supportive, you will find the light at the end. Your hard work will pay off. Trust me on that. Keep your brain and body, um, keep working on your brain and body, blah, 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 you know? So my dad's supporting me. So again, that, this was kind of one of the first kind of replies I got to these newsletters. Um, Alec, so 2019, uh, Alec just being supportive. Beautiful read. Hope to get the concurrent user count up. So he was talking about how many users I had on the thing I was working on. So it's cool, you know, like this, I got one reply maybe on average every two weeks. Um, eventually, some new people started popping into my life. This guy hits me up, David Arnetto. You remember David Arnetto? David Arnetto was this random guy at Google. Uh, and he was like, I would love to just talk to you about your idea. And I was like, oh, at this time, I go, like, oh, shit, like, cool. Someone I don't know <laughs> sharing curiosity. I must be on to something. And I end up going to Google. I end up getting lunch with him. Ends up being a great guy um, in New York. And it was just kind of a, an amazing experience. And to this day, I don't talk to him to this day, but I remember we talked for a long time. And I haven't talked to Dave in a while. How about you, David Arnetto? Hope he's OK. David, if you're watching this. Um, and so after about a year of doing this, actually, a year of just like grinding this newsletter, uh, one guy in particular hits me up that I felt like was kind of different, a new, a new character in my life. And his name was Sean Puri. And um, how many of you know this guy? I'm just curious. Cool. So this guy, at this point, Sean Puri is kind of like internet celebrity. Massive podcast, probably biz biggest business podcast there is. Um, and yeah, just like, just like a, he's not a nobody, that's for sure, right? Um, and what's funny is he just replies, this is my first ever interaction with Sean. He replies to my newsletter. And he's the only, he just says, good luck, bro. Let me know if I can help. Um, and this was the very, this is real. This was the real one from 20, I think, 19. Um, and I'm just mind blown, right? Because uh, at the time, uh, I'm a nobody, like I'm an absolute nobody. At best, I, I have like a couple of uh, things that I built on my GitHub, that's about it. And, and Sean was also not a nobody for sure. He had just sold his first company, right? But he wasn't anywhere near like where he is today even, right? So at the end of the day, we're kind of both just randoms actually. Uh, but Sean really felt like he was very ahead of me. Like I wanted to start a company and Sean already started a company and sold the company. So I was like, oh shit, it's pretty cool. Like, and he, and, and he just replied to me. So all of a sudden, it's, it's kind of interesting, right? Um, and so it kind of keeps going, right? Every one to two weeks, uh, Sean replies to my newsletter, uh, which at this point has maybe 100 people on it. Uh, he would say sometimes, dope post. That's it. 
Sometimes he would literally, uh, I would talk about a new idea and he would say, hey dude, it's good to do stuff like this, clarifies your thinking, keeps you honest. I want to be like, yeah, this is, this is a dope idea, do it. But in reality, I think this is a fuck. He's going to waste six to 12 months of his life on this. Sometimes replies like that, just him being honest about uh, what I'm working on. Sometimes it's just him roasting me. He's like, this newsletter sucks now. I miss your newsletter back when it was talking about you know, what you tried, right? Now you're just giving unsolicited advice. They're essentially like stupid medium articles. Like, so sometimes he just roasts me, right? Um, uh, sometimes he would just be like, yo, like, let's talk tomorrow. What's your number? Like, he would just literally be like, yo, you, are you available right now? You know? Um, sometimes he would help me go through like, some really tough emotional decisions. I remember one in particular, I, was, I wanted to leave a company that I co-founded. Um, and I was so, I had no one to talk to about that. Talk to Sean. I remember I got on the phone with him. Two hours, we figured it out. Um, it got to the point where we're thinking about starting a company together. Um, we're talking all about our idea, everything, right? So it kind of kind of crazy, right? That it all started from just a guy being like here, <laughs> right? Because I think a lot of you probably have people like this in your life that are down to help you, but I don't know. I feel like a lot of times it takes a certain skill to actually get help from them and to build on top of that relationship. And I want to just talk about, and I think this relationship with Sean that I built up, it was almost all over email, almost all over email. Um, and they were almost all like little responses like this. So it's interesting because, um, yeah, I think that like, I think right after this email in particular, where this guy literally says, you know, let me just summarize this, right? Um, at this point, he's like, I will fly you out to San Francisco, I will fund you to work on an idea, and I will, uh, and I will literally like work with you every week on the idea. Right? And he even lays out like how much we'd split ownership. Like everything's kind of laid out. And you know, I'm like mind blown at this point. I'm like, holy shit, like, like this guy is really down to help me. Like he's really down to take a chance on me and help me. And uh, it's at that moment where I was like, damn, I should navigate the world um, <laughs> with other people <laughs> alongside me. I should have I should bring other people along my journey. I shouldn't have to just play the game solo in my head all day. And I think this in moment in particular really kind of made that obvious for me. And yeah, Sean's replies, man, they really were a weekly blessing. Like, I would sometimes write that newsletter just because Sean would reply um, sometimes. Because that's my only motivation. It's like, okay, at the very worst, there's a 25% chance that Sean reads something interesting and tells me something interesting. All right? And so that was enough for me. I would just keep on <laughs> making that newsletter, which, was, uh, which would take me like four hours a week. Um, because I think the main thing is Sean helped me in ways that I didn't know I even needed. Like, I'm not like asking Sean questions. Like, hey, Sean, how do I do X? It's more like I'm telling Sean my story, and then Sean kind of reflects back, like, have you thought about X, Y, Z? Right? And that, to me, was a lot more helpful because I didn't even know the questions that I had. I was, I never really, I'm not, I don't come from the world of starting companies since, or starting a startup, right? So he did. And uh, I felt like he helped me navigate that world because I was like, I came into that, I came into the startup world not knowing anything. Um, and so yeah, in 30 emails, 10 to 20 phone calls, this man changes my trajectory, right? And I think that is mind blowing. That in 30 emails and 10 phone calls, he, that, that someone can do that. Someone that I never met, someone that I never met him physically, by the way, until like years later. Um, and uh, it's just mind blowing to me how that can happen um, with, with very little, with very few touch points, right? So, why am I telling you all this? Why am I giving you my whole ass story um, on me and this guy? Um, because I actually think that most people, not just you all, but just most people, actually really suck at asking for help. Um, and I thought about this a lot. I thought about like why, uh, and we'll get more into that, uh, and like why I think that's the case. But I think most importantly about why I'm telling you all this is because I think you all need help. Uh, not because you're struggling right now. Some of you could be doing amazing right now. It's really because you kind of always need help, even if you don't know it yet. Um, why? <laughs> That's another question, right? Like, why then uh, do, you, do I think that many of you need help? Because as you work on stuff, you will almost always stagnate, like almost always. Very few cases in like life or like history where you see people that just went like, whoosh, like forever, you know? At one point, you won't actually stagnate. Um, uh, I'm sure you've all seen this kind of like uh, comparison many times where like 
this is what you think it's going to be like. You know, you're straight up all the time for the rest of your life. Um, but in reality, it looks a lot more like this, right? Where you kind of get like a big spike, and then you like that. And then you have another big spike, and then you're just like that. And then you have another big spike, and then you're just flat again. Um, this, to me, is like more realistic. Uh, because this, to me, is like shows that you are stagnating, right? So even if we look at this, right here, right? You were flat for maybe like three months. You were like in the, the sunken place for three months. But then you figured something out for three months. And then you were flat for three months. But then you figured something out in another three months. And again, then you just went down. You literally lost. You, 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 you were back to where you were like maybe six months ago. But then, bada bing, you figure something else out. So I, these moments, like these moments where you are like going from like flat to kind of up, um, uh, those are moments that are very hard to figure out by yourself. Like very hard. Um, and you actually need to do something to really force yourself past stagnation. Otherwise, you'll stay. Like, you'll stay in this zone for months if you are just left to yourself, actually. Very few times will you be able to figure out by yourself. You can, but it's very hard. Um, so, for example, some of you may feel like you are stuck here right now, right? Uh, and you kind of want to get to this little inflection point, but it's tough. Like, you don't really know. You, you're, not sure, you're putting in the work. What are you missing? You, know, like these like you, don't, you don't even know the right questions anymore. Right? Some of you may feel like you're here. Like you feel like you got through the initial thing. You had some magic, but now you're stuck again. You know? um, it's tough. And you want to get, get here. You, you want to get to like that, that next inflection point, but you don't know how. And again, some of you may be like, yo, I'm going backwards. <laughs> like, things are going downhill for me. Uh, what the fuck am I doing? Uh, am I just like, you know, yeah, why am I going backwards? Why am I going down again? Like, I want to be going here. So again, uh, these are things, that these, these little moments here are like moments of, or periods of stagnation. And I think I just want you all to know that it's very normal and very difficult to deal with emotionally. Um, but overall, I just want to let you know that this is normal. And, um, and again, like I said, you can break out of this by yourself, I think. It's just really hard. <laughs> it's very hard. Um, uh, and I think you can only go so far alone. So what do you need? Um, you need those people in your life that are ahead of you, um, that are willing to help you. Uh, not just the people that are like around you down to support you. Those are great people to have no matter what. Like, for example, this group, right? Uh, your friends you've made here at Build Space. Those are great people to just have around you for forever, really. They will support you always. But generally, it's good to have people in your life that are ahead of you, um, in your specific domain, in your specific craft, and whatever you're trying to get good at, right? Um, there's always going to be that person, at least in my life, you know? Sean is one example of a person in my life that helped me break through a major period of stagnation and helped me figure out my next step, right? So you'll always have that person. And I'm sure even today in your lives, uh, you could probably, um, you probably, you may feel like there's a person in your life that helped take you to that, that next step. Maybe it's a parent, maybe it's a friend, maybe it's like a mentor, all right? Um, so what, what can this look like? What can it look like when you're kind of asking for help or looking for help? There's a few things. It could look like a classic mentor-mentee relationship, right? So this is Steve Jobs and Mike Marucola, uh, who was originally Steve Jobs' mentor, gave him the money, helped him start the company, right? Uh, this is your classic mentor-mentee relationship. Um, it could be something like Porter Robinson and Skrillex. Porter Robinson was nobody. Skrillex finds him and says, hey, man, I, I want to help you. Like, you're making, uh, you, you made, Porter Robinson, I made this really um, great EP called Spitfire. And uh, Skrillex sees that. And to this day, 10 years later, they are still, like, helping each other. Um, and Porter Robinson still sees Skrillex as his mentor. Um, it may look like Dr. Dre and Eminem. Eminem was nobody. Dr. Dre finds him. And then fucking 20 years later, here they are, still collabing, still doing things together. Again, more of a mentor-mentee relationship. It can look more like a partnership. Maybe that's what it ends up being. Um, Key and Peele, you know, they found each other, they made each other better, right? And you can argue that they have made some of like the best uh, kind of improv comedy stuff I've ever seen. Um, a lot of people, anyone know who the guy on the left is? Walt Disney. Walt Disney. Uh, anyone go on? Many of you, probably no one knows who the guy on the right is, I'm guessing, at that point. Roy. But, hmm? Roy. No, not Roy. Uh, this is um, Ub Iwerks. Uh, he was... The kind of more expert animator in the early days. 
So when Walt Disney first started, Walt was pretty good, but this guy was even better at animation. Like he was like, the, you know, you have like the really like great like developer, right? That just like will come in and like do it better than you. Yeah, that guy was like that, but for animation back in the early, I'm not sure what year this is. Um, but again, Walt had that partner, right? Because Walt Disney knew like I'm not the best at animation. I need a guy that's gonna help me figure it out, and found this guy, right? So that's more of a partnership. We can keep going. This is Miyazaki. Miyazaki was great at making movies, but sucked at marketing them. So he found this other guy. His name's Suzuki. Suzuki, to this day, markets every Ghibli movie. Um, so again, you need help. <laughs> it, can, it can come in any format. It can look like this, or it can look like this. It really just depends. Or it can look as simple as this. Um, I saw this moment today. Uh, I took a picture, Niyati and Ali. I don't know what was going on, but Niyati, what, what was going on? Were you showing him something funny, or? You're just showing him Miley's Instagram. Great, yeah. Just a moment like this can be like, what do you think? Again, I'm not, I'm not sure if you're asking for help in that moment, but it looked to me like you were asking for help or, or you're just helping each other in a weird way. I don't know. If not, then it's a false narrative. But <laughs> I see that, regardless, I see this scene all the time, you know, at Build Space, while you guys are here, you guys are constantly showing each other each other's stuff. So again, maybe you're not at this point yet where you got this level of kind of help that you found, but this counts. So you're starting somewhere. Correct? And it's very important to realize. So a lot of you are here at this point where you're asking for help like this in small ways, but how can we improve on how we ask for help? Um, how can we ask better questions? How can we, yeah, kind of essentially um, yeah, ask in a really pointed way, push the work forward by asking others for help um, so we don't have to play the game solo. Um, so let's go through, I want to go through some ways. Number one, go direct. Uh, this is the most obvious thing I can possibly say, which is if there is someone out there that can help you, you should go ask them. <laughs> um, and let me kind of give you a, a simple framework to kind of follow there. Um, take something very small you're trying to get good at and, and that you need help on. Maybe it's, I don't know, something technical. Uh, maybe it's, uh, you know, short form content. Maybe it's, uh, you know, I think Derek Declan today were talking about Facebook ads. Where are they at? Yeah, you're, you're talking about Facebook ads. Maybe you want to get good at Facebook ads. Something small you're trying to get good at, right? Okay, now find the person that's two to three steps ahead of whatever, uh, ahead of, of you at that thing, you know? They don't have to be experts at that thing, but they're like ahead of you for sure. And just have that direct ask. Um, that's like the simplest thing you can possibly do. You're not trying to save, find people that are gonna like save your project or save your life. You're trying to find people that are gonna like help you in a very pointed way. And you should know what you want help on. So again, short form content, maybe it's a developer thing, whatever. Um, I did this last week. Uh, last week, uh, I got back into coding land with Alec, and I was like, all right, I have no idea how to build an AI app these days. I literally have zero clue. I have not made a single AI app, AI app since 2019 or 2021. <laughs> um, so what do I do? I get in a call with Naveed. Naveed is from SF1. He built an AI app, right? Um, I get in a call with Sharif. There's Sharif, me, and Stevan last week. This is Tuesday. And we just asked Sharif on a whiteboard, how do you build this? And you know, um, have him go through it step by step. So again, we know these people are ahead of us. So there's no shame in that. We just ask for help. Um, so for most of you, and for most of you, those that can help you are always a DM away. Generally, I believe that. Because again, you're looking for people two or three steps away from you, not like 20 steps away from you. Like, if you're a musician today and you try to reach out to Skrillex, pretty hard, right? Um, but if you try to reach out to another artist that's maybe a bit smaller, maybe 10% the size, a little easier. I want to give an example. Uh, or Samia. Samia, what's this guy's name? Telwinder. Telwinder. Uh, so Samia hits me up on email and says, you know, Farza, do you have a connect to Telwinder? And I was like, hey, yo, man, definitely not. Um, but what I did was I just went to his Instagram. At this point, let's see. You felt like this guy could help you, right? Can I help your sound a little bit? And he's based in California? Yeah. Cool, so amazing. Sami has, has identified someone that can potentially help him on his journey, um, which is fucking beautiful. That's a shout out to you for even finding someone. That's, that's, that's the hardest part sometimes. Great, so now we have a couple of options. We can message him here. 273, 273K followers. I don't know, what do you think? Pretty tough? It's really tough. Pretty tough. So what do I do? I click this guy's website. Okay, cool, it's a, here's his website. I, I found his Twitter. Turns out he has 800 followers on Twitter, his DMs are open, and he last tweeted 10 days ago, or whatever, it's 14 days ago. All right, that's already a potential in, you know? 
Um, and then we can keep going and, trying to, and keep trying to find his email or other avenues to him. But again, this guy is so small in the grand scheme of things. And I hope that, I know this may seem like a, a big personality or like a hard person to get in touch with, but at the end of the day, um, there is a path to them. And I think this person is totally someone you can reach out to. And if this person doesn't respond, that's fine. Let's find someone a little bit smaller that's still ahead of you, right? Um, but again, it may not seem obvious on how this guy, how you can talk to this guy, but you gotta do some digging. You gotta do some work on your own, right? Kind of find them, get to them. Okay, cool, so that's my first thing. Just go direct, um, find the people ahead of you, a little bit ahead of you, and a very specific aspect of the work, and then uh, kind of go from there. Yeah. yeah, I think if you go back like a couple of slides to his website, yes. it says my music will help me find my people, so even you can leverage that as, like a, as a point in common. Um, like, hey, you have this on your website, and, and I need this help. Like, <laughs> I don't know if, if that's the way. Yeah, that I no, I think like uh, we can talk more about some in a different time on how you would actually like format the message. But at the end of the day, yeah, great observation. I didn't notice. My music will help me find my people. Holy shit, this guy's trying to find you, Samia. <laughs> like, great. Like, you should talk about that. You should get to him. Um, that's so funny. I didn't even read that. Great, great catch. Um, um, my second kind of like, uh, I wouldn't say tip, but it's just like a, a kind of more pointed way to ask for help. This is my favorite way to ask for help, uh, is to open yourself up for help in a, and let others uh, track your journey. Um, so what does that mean? Um, one second, what is this slide? Oh uh, yeah, okay, so here. Um, here is where you're actually going directly to people and asking them for help, right? Like you're literally reaching out to them. Um, in this case, uh, Samia would directly reach out to this artist that could potentially help him. Or in this case, I'm directly reaching out to uh, my buddies and asking them for help, right? But I think um, what's also interesting is those who will reach out to you to just help you naturally. Um, how can you make that happen? Um, because in my experience, those are the people that have become like my greatest allies and the people that have stuck around in my life uh, for longest. Um, and uh, what's obvious here is like if you want someone to help you, you have to give them the opportunity. They have to know that you need help or that you would, are, are even wanting help. Um, generally today, if I look up a lot of your guys' work, a lot of your socials, a lot of your profiles, it's not really obvious what you need help with actually, to be honest. Um, you want to make it hyper, hyper obvious that you need help and why and from who, et cetera, right? And let me kind of paint, that, paint the picture. For me, again, I told you earlier, I did, I did this with a newsletter. Um, I knew if I grinded a newsletter for four years uh, that something good would happen. <laughs> um, particularly, what would happen is uh, I'd give more opportunity for people to help me, right? Through a simple reply. So again, Sean, earlier, I gave him the opportunity to even reply. Um, otherwise, if I never sent that email, Dude, Sean's not gonna talk to me. Like, there's no reason, right? So again, Sean, I pop up in his inbox. He's like, all right, this far as a kid, back at it again. Let's see what he's up to. Uh, reads it and then replies, right? So I gave him the opportunity. And again, newsletter worked for me because I love writing. I've always loved writing. And, uh, or not always loved writing, but it's always been an interest. And uh, that worked for me. Other, um, other things that I've tried, sometimes I literally just write one page Google Docs and then I send them to people that I, I want help, uh, or I, I just post them online, or I email them out to like, people that I think could help me. Another option, right? I've actually asked, how many of you have written a one-page doc for me? I'm just curious. James, Johnson, I think one more. Adam as well, yes, yeah, so three people. Uh, that helped me a lot, because I read your doc, and I immediately, like in two minutes, understand what's their story, where are they at, what's their problem, what do they need help with, how can I help, you know? Like instantly, I'm not sitting there for a 45-minute conversation trying to get it out of you, you know, you just give it to me straight. So again, these are two things that work for me, uh, but let's talk about some other examples. This is a kid, I don't know where he actually, I found out about him, but his name's, oh, what, you know? I know. Oh, from where? TKS. Ah, oh, TKS. So this is Ayan, and I don't know, one day he emails me, and he's like, hey Farza, can I put you on my weekly newsletter where I send out vlogs, or, or my weekly vlog letter thing, whatever it is. And yeah, he just sends out these vlogs every single month, and he sends them out like really every month. And it's a two minute video where he talks about what he did that, that month. Amazing, it works for him. Uh, Cause he likes doing in front of the camera. He's vocally pretty good. It works, and I actually watch these every time. I've been watching him for like a year now. And I, I just, 
I've never talked to him. I've sent him maybe five messages, but I always like reply. I'm like, hey, Ayan, like, how are you doing this? Do you need help with that? And I'm kind of always like, he gives me the opportunity to help him. You know, that's the most important thing. Another example, this is Nishu and Stavan. So Nishu will literally just send Stavan like full on vlogs and essays about how his stuff is going, right? Like directly. And Stavan sometimes replies, someone Stavan sometimes doesn't. And I think what's important is like Nishu is giving the opportunity for Stavan to even reply, right? Like not many people are gonna go out and literally make little videos like this, you know? Um, I have another person uh, who, uh, again, I don't, I'm not sure what, I, what just, just like a buddy at this point, but he about every like once a month sends me like a five minute voice note about as updating me about his work, his life and how he feels. And uh, he, I have no pressure to reply, but that's how he keeps me updated. And I think he sends those out to 20 people like every month, right? So again, I reply to those, I help him out. But this is another way. Maybe you're more comfortable with something like this. It's more private. Um, I think that this will always hold people back from doing this. Uh, you'll always be like, damn, like, do I really want to tell the world or this person that uh, I'm been, I've been failing for like six weeks straight? Um, or do I really want to tell the world or this person that uh, things aren't going as great as it could be going? I think that's like actually pretty hard. But you'll quickly realize what I learned at least is that nobody cares about me. Uh, I'm just like a really small fish, to be honest. And uh, damn, like it doesn't, no one's gonna be thinking this. It's just in my head, but yeah. So I've had that thought before for sure, but I've also had another thought that it's just like what I'm doing is insignificant. Yeah. And there's no reason that I should even put something out. It's like literally no one should care. For sure, you know, if we go back to that, uh, that one slide where I'm talking about the fan theory of Death Note, I'm telling you, nobody gives a shit about that one fan theory except me. Huh? Again, they're not on my email list. <laughs> it's more like, yeah, like, even if something's so insignificant, it was still cool to you. So, like, at least give someone the opportunity to decide for themselves if it's, if it's insignificant, you know? I think that helps a lot. Um, on that Death Note email, by the way, uh, someone did reply, and it was just like a funny, like, that was interesting, you know, type of reply. We can pull it up after this. Um, but yeah, turns out even someone found that interesting. So, I know, my philosophy has always been, let the other person decide whether or not this is worth their time. Uh, you just be honest. You just be like, be real with what you think is cool. Um, and yeah, the more you put yourself out there, uh, your struggles, not just the more you put yourself out there, because the whole world, I want to be very clear about this, uh, kind of like, Going online and just talking about your wins doesn't do much. Like, I just made a hundred dollars. You know, the people who, who like post like stuff like that all the time, like, I just made a hundred dollars. Now I made a five hundred dollars. Now I'm making a million dollars. It's like, well, it's cool, but like, w that doesn't give me a place, that doesn't mean, help me understand where I, where I can help you, right? Uh, where are you struggling? You know, like, where are you flopping? What's the last thing that you tried that didn't work? Uh, what'd you learn? You know, like, how are you getting these thoughts out there? But right now, a lot of you probably aren't. But again, it's up to you how you can do it. Maybe it looks like this with a single person. Maybe it looks like this with like 20 people. It really is up to you and what you kind of feel best doing. Yeah. I feel like, and this we have talked about this before as well, like we end up going into this loop of trying to uh, feel legit in public. Yep. And, and like making a brand out of ourselves and like comparing ourselves to like the top artists or the top like builders in the world that we see. Yeah. And so we don't put our struggles and stuff out there. We, we only put our awards and achievements yeah, yeah. out there to just like make an image. For sure. Sort of. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, pretty much. Yeah. You, I mean, that, that people do that. I think that it's just up to you to decide if you want to do that. Like, do you want to just put yourself out there and make like a, just be seen by the world as great? Um, is that your goal, actually? Like, do you really care? Um, again, for me, I just, I guess, never cared. So I guess I, it's, I never actually, it never burned me. It's not that I didn't care about what the world thought of, of, of what I was doing. It's just that I never got burned from it, you know? Um, to this day, I've never been burned by like putting my struggles out there. Um, in fact, it makes people like have more empathy with me, uh, sympathize with me. Um, and I think that's kind of interesting too. So, uh, but yeah, again, you don't have to be public about this. It's whatever you're comfortable with. Like, Nishu just texts Stavan. 
Um, I have another guy that just texts me a voice note once a month, so it's kind of up to you, actually. There should be that group of people that are ahead of you, uh, maybe five people, 10 people, whatever it is, maybe one person that you feel like you can uh, kind of depend on. Um, that, that will not judge you. I think that's pretty hard, too, but yeah. yeah. This might be a niche question, but I usually like to post this kind of, like, post the struggles on Twitter. Yeah. Um, and just be open on Twitter. But uh, a lot of my sales for my course came from Twitter. Mm -hmm. And so part of me feels a little weird to be, like, honest about the course experience or just, like, post behind the scenes of it now that those people have been the people I've sold to. So how does that dynamic change when you're, like, selling to the people that you're I just feel like that the fear of being judged is in a great place uh, to make decisions from. Um, just who gives a fuck? Like, if they're not gonna buy, they're not gonna buy it, you know? Um, I don't know, easier said than done, but for me, I just, I just don't care. Like, okay, like, then that means they're not gonna buy from me. All right, we'll find someone else. <laughs> Should be okay, but again, easier said than done. And the last thing, and probably the hardest thing, uh, is uh, be the type of person people want to help. Uh, I have a question. How many of you here have asked a teammate or a teammate for help or feedback? Like you've, you've reached out to us, you've almost everyone. Okay, cool. Follow up question and please be hyper honest. How many of you came back within a day or two and then showed them the result? Like you showed it to them, like literally on your phone or your laptop. Okay, one, two, yeah, cool, makes sense. Most of you didn't do it, some of you did, shout out, um, good stuff. Um, why is that important? Uh, pretty much, uh, you have to think about things from the perspective of the person helping you. Let's just say it's one of us, right, at, uh, who work at BuildSpace. Again, you kind of got to make it interesting for even us. Like, are we helping you out of the goodness of our heart? Are we helping you because it's our job? Are we helping you just because we want to help you? That would be the best reason, right? So again, um, when even like you do something like this, when you ask someone for feedback or you ask someone to help you with something and they helped you, you should be back within like at minimum an hour and at maximum a day showing them how it went. For example, many of you have helped me, have asked me for advice on your TikToks or your shorts. And I give you my five to 10 minutes of advice uh, and my take, all right? But then no one's come back to me showing me the result. Like not a single one who's asked me for help. Um, what's up with that? Like now I don't really feel like helping you after, or I have, a less, I have less of an incentive because I'm like, oh, here they are back again asking you help with another thing. I don't even know how that last thing went. Like, are they just gonna kind of waste my time again here? You know, like that's kind of a thought going through my head. And I kind of stack that up 10, 15 times, all of a sudden, you're a really hard person to help, you know? Um, and how do you solve that? Very simple, like, Farza, uh, you gave me this feedback, I tried it, uh, here was the result. You know, so easy. Um, so if you ask someone for help, remember, you have a responsibility to actually go back to them and update them. Because if you don't, they're gonna be like, uh, so where'd they go? Uh, and then it's just, it's not fun. It's just not fun, uh, basically. Um, so I think it's worth asking some questions even to yourself internally right now. Is it a pain to help you? Like honestly, like are you, when you ask for help, do you feel like you're kind of getting the person to get out of their way and it's like, you're like just tugging them aside and being like, yo, help me, you know? Or like, is it a pain to help you? Like how do you ask for help? How do you pull people aside? How do you make time? This sort of stuff. Right? Just simplest first question, is it a pain to help you? And again, you kind of all know the answer internally, whatever it is. Uh, do you make it simple to understand your problems? Am I sitting there for 20 minutes just trying to understand whatever it is you're trying to ask me? Or do you ask me in the first 60 seconds? Um, generally, we're pretty nice here and we'll, have, we'll be pretty patient and we'll take time to understand your problem. But most of the world, not so much. They'll be like, wow, uh, I really don't have 20 minutes to spend uh, going to this person's life and figuring out their deepest, darkest problems. Uh, I gotta go, you know, I gotta, it's time to go, you know? So just make it simple to understand your problems. Like, do you actually? And a lot of you, again, you have an answer. Do you drain the person helping you? This is, probably many of you have not asked this question. Uh, you ask us for a lot of help. You probably ask other people for a lot of help. Are you draining us? Was it energizing to help you? Or did it feel like, just like a, like a chore, you know? How can it not feel like a chore? Um, you know, if you ask Josh for help on a video, uh, how can it, what does Josh want? What does Josh want to see? Josh probably wants to see you succeed. So, succeed, <laughs> and then show Josh. Um, and if you didn't succeed, that's fine. Still show Josh. <laughs> uh, 
because then that's going to energize whoever you're helping. And if, I think this is the last one. Does the person helping you feel like they're seeing the fruits, right? Um, most of the time, the people that will help you the most are the ones that like, are down to invest in you over like months and years. And we'll get into like, that sort of relationship in a sec. But for that to happen, uh, they really got to see the, they really got to see that something is happening, you know? Otherwise, it really does get tiring. Um, again, if, I, if one of you asks me for kind of my take 20 days in a row, and then 20 days later, you're in the same place, I'm not annoyed, you know? Generally, people won't be annoyed, but I'll just be like, oh man, like, I don't really feel like expending the energy now to like, help them. And that's not a good place to be, right? Um, let's just say the opposite. Let's just say you talk to me for 20 days in a row, and um, you tried, you, you kind of updated me for 20 days in a row as well, right? You didn't just do the same thing that you would have done anyways. You actually were like, oh, Farza, like, check this out. You mentioned doing this. I tried it out. Here's what happened. Let's see, let's see you do that for 20 days in a row with me, all right? I will be your biggest fan. Like, I will do everything and anything to help you, like, win in life, right? Because it's like, oh, my God, like, they are actually, like, uh, I'm actually helping them, and that feels great. And uh, it sounds like, um, and it sounds like uh, uh, they're also enjoying working with me. Great. It's essentially like we're friends now. Cool. Uh, and I think that'd be, that's like the best place to get to. And I think uh, when you think about help, uh, don't think of help as a one-off request, like ever, where it's like, what do you think about this? And then leave, you know? Or like, how, what do you think about this tweet? And then leave. It's like, it's not that. It's actually like a very long-term relationship with the person that's helping you. Of course, it may start with something small, which is like, what do you think about this tweet? Great. And then, then, and then, and then uh, maybe in two days, you show me how that tweet went. And then you show me more. Now we're talking more about your Twitter. Now we're talking about your other socials. And now, we're, now it turns out we've been talking for three to six months. You know? And we've been helping each other for three to six months. Um, that's an example of like how you can, a one-off request can turn into something a lot longer. But again, I think a lot of people think about asking for help as a one-off, and you like a, like let's hop on a quick call. You know, like I get these times. I guess I I'm also guilty of sending those types of emails to people uh, back when I was like uh, in college, especially uh, where I'd be like, hey, let's hop on a call. I think you're interesting. It's like, well, I don't know. <laughs> Who are you? Uh, so yes. So something I have a question about that. Um, some of the people that I like that are ahead of me that I ask for help. Um, I'll have periods of my life where I'm consistently talking to them, yeah. like once every week or once every two weeks or something. Yep, like yep. That. And then there's other periods where it goes like years, and I'll like talk to them once every three months or six months or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and those feel like after it gets to the point where the interactions are more crowded, it feels more like one off. So is that what you're classifying as one off, or do you mean just like talking to the person one time on one call? Um, I think one off is more talking to the person like one time on one call. Um, I think your situation is, uh, it sounds like it was a good relationship. Uh, you got what you wanted out of it and you moved on with life. You know, I think that's okay. Um, we have these, I'll talk about one relationship like that I have, I have like uh, with a person right now. Um, but I think one-off is, like you want to kind of reduce one-offs in the sense of like, I'll give you a perfect example of a one-off, right? Where it's like, um, I gotta go back to like the TikTok example. A lot of you ask me for TikTok advice constantly, right? And uh, I don't know why, I've never made a TikTok personally myself, so. Take, take that as you will. Um, but again, like, if you keep returning to the person with one-off requests and you don't tell them how the previous requests went, it's just like a one-off. Every conversation is a new thread. <laughs> and you want to kind of keep like one big old thread. You know? You're writing a book with them. You're not writing like, every, some, of, some of you are like writing a new book every time I talk to you. And it's like, OK, um, let's not do that. It's, uh, it's very hard you know, uh, on the person that's helping you. Uh, remember, you will never annoy a person with results no matter good, no matter bad, ever. Like, no one's ever going to be mad that, like, you did something and then it didn't work. Um, they just, they're just happy that you even tried. Remember that. Um, I want to give a, one final story. Some of you already know this guy. I've talked about this guy a bunch. But this is Furkan. Uh, he runs Founders, Inc. And uh, this man single-handedly has changed my life probably, like, 10 times. Uh, not even exaggerating. It's ridiculous. And I want to talk a little bit about how it started. Uh, how it kind of like how I put in a lot of effort to kind of make the relationship work, and uh, how it worked out for me over a very long period, and it actually and it also was cool, it also was really fun for him. Um, first of all, I wrote this blog post in 2018, January 2018, a long blog post about how I did this deep learning thing, 
right? Uh, it goes kind of mini viral. I got like 1.4K collapse there, whatever that means on Medium, if you remember Medium. And uh, I got 1.4K collapse, and uh, Furkan was one of the people who, who read this, right? Someone had posted it on Twitter or on Reddit, and Furkan read it on Reddit. So Furkan knew me actually from this, but we never talked. From there, uh, I have my buddy Sharif, uh, who, you, who did the talk here. In 2018, Sharif messaged me this. He says, uh, I would talk to Furkan because he's so close to UNSF. Uh, this dude is like the Elon Musk of video game streaming. Whatever that means. Um, but back then, this was really exciting for me and Sharif. So again, Sharif knew him uh, uh, for, from, other, from, from another thing. And then I just messaged Furkan. I DM him on Twitter. I'm like, hey man, thanks for the follow. My boy Salmon has been talking a bunch about you lately. Super glad you're helping his team. I'm not even asking for anything. I'm just like, hey man, thanks. Uh, and I'm glad that you're working with my friends. And then he essentially, Furkan follows up. You know, he's like, I think he mentioned you're in SF. Fucking two days later, we're meeting up, you know? Uh, and he offers, me, uh, he offers me dinner at his office uh, where his chef comes and cooks for us. It was pretty awesome. Uh, so again, this is actually how it started. Like this is like the, I just ripped it straight from Twitter. Um, and this just goes on and on, to be honest with you. Like we just keep on talking every single week. It starts to get like, I can, I can go through like 50 messages that looks just like this, where it's like so, us saying, you wanna talk? And then him saying, I'm around at this time, you know? Constantly. And you know, I was honestly kind of relentless. Uh, I was, uh, yeah, I was kind of relentless. I didn't have any like uh, I didn't think of I didn't think too much about annoying him because I kind of just felt like if I was annoying him, he'd tell me. Um, so great, let me just kind of keep asking for 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 kind of things from him. Um, and then from there, we actually kept a weekly chat for every week for almost three years. Um, yeah, like every week for three years. Now, how did that happen? What were those calls? Very simple. Every week, I think it was like Wednesday nights usually. Furkan would call me. Uh, we would screen share, and I would show him what I did that week, and he would be like, this XYZ thing you're doing is just stupid, stop doing that, try this new thing. And he would give me his take. I would then try some new stuff. I would also kind of listen to his takes, and I would spend another week, and again, we would come back to that again. So every week was actually really fun, because for Furcon, think about it from his point of view, he is like seeing some random dude uh, go off and explore ideas that he himself is interested in. <laughs> So for Furcon, it was just like, oh man, like let's just see what happens, you know? Like I'm just curious, um, and yeah, that was great. It, that was like the initial thing that kind of kept us uh, kept us going for in, in the early days. And then yeah, after that, we just kept on talking. And I, I literally, I want to, I want to kind of be clear. I told this man everything, uh, everything. I told him about my emotional breakdowns. I told him about my horrible losses, my greatest wins. Um, and I think my goal was always to be like, how could I be the type of person that I would want to help? Because I know that as Farza, I'm like, I ask a lot out of folks generally. Um, but how can I make that a kind of like a, uh, how, like how can I make that fun for the person at least, you know? So it doesn't feel like, oh fuck, I have to hop on a Zoom call with Farza again. God damn it, I really don't want to do this. You know, like that shouldn't be the feeling. It should be like, oh shit, let's go. Like, what's Farza cooking this week? You know, I think that was usually the feeling. Um, Maybe Furkan would say different, but maybe we can bring him in and we can have him uh, tell us if this is true or not. And again, I want to be, like I'm saying, I shared everything with him. Uh, I was at one point sharing how my mom and dad were freaking out about me moving to San Francisco, and he was giving me advice around like, how to deal with my parents. <laughs> uh, at one point, uh, by the way, I'm a one-man company for like years. Uh, I bring Furkan into my Slack channel. It's just me and Furkan in Slack, and uh, he's my team. And I would just keep on updating him every single day, like multiple times a day, tagging him uh, with ideas that I had or new kind of experiments that I was running. So it was like a very, it was like very relentless. And it was very hands-on. And um, I gave him a lot of opportunity to help me, you know? Like that was the most important thing. For example, this was an idea that I had. Um, you don't have to read it, but summarized is, uh, I was like, oh, what if you could learn about racing drones uh, at your home school? Drain, uh, racing drones are pretty fun. Um, kids these days are into robots. What if we did this thing where we like helped people make uh, 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 dr drone racing scenes in uh, um, alongside their homeschool in Florida? Again, very specific, very niche. But I remember he replied to this like, "Please stop thinking about this. Like, stop. 
Like whatever you're doing, stop. Like keep doing the thing that you told me about the other week. And again, like these sorts of interactions helped a lot. And he felt like a partner, you know, all the time. Um, despite the fact that he wasn't actually literally working with me on stuff. Um, and then again, all the way down to the biggest wins. This was my diary from 2020. I get into YC, which was a big deal. And then uh, I got to share that win with him, right? Because I'm pretty solo in my life, right? For the most part, I, talked to, I, I think I started this talk earlier sharing with you guys that I didn't have anybody to help me, didn't have anyone that I could talk to about this stuff. Finally, I had someone to talk to. I could even share with someone that I got into Y Combinator because my parents aren't going to care. My cousins and brothers aren't going to care. They don't even know what that is. But hey, Furkan cares. And that was fun. It was fun to just share that with him, right? And so in a weird way, I've learned that no one actually wants to help you. Like nobody. Like no one goes out and be like, I want to help Kieran. I want to help James. You know, no one does that. Um, and when they do do that, it actually ends up being kind of weird. Uh, so maybe like stay away from those people that are like, I can help you. You know, uh, it's like, okay, man, all right, shit, okay, maybe. Um, uh, or I can be your mentor. It's like, all right, dude, bet, bet, okay. Um, honestly, uh, yeah, no one seeks to help you. It just kind of happens. Again, I showed you the, the Sean story. I showed you the Furcon story. I showed you the story with a bunch of other, I showed you a bunch of other stories. This just kind of happens, and you have to make, you have to create an environment for it to have happened. Otherwise, it won't. Um, and yeah, over time, what's beautiful about this is you kind of just become good friends. Like at this point, Furkan's not my mentor. Like that's just kind of weird. He's more like a, more like a brother, more like a friend, right? Um, but that just kind of happened over many, many years, uh, to be honest. Um, and yeah, that's pretty cool. It's uh, pretty cool. Uh, so again, to kind of end here, I'm going to take questions. This doesn't need to be a solo player mission. Please don't make it like that. Uh, I know some of you think that only you can solve your problems, but please open your brains up to thinking who can potentially help you. Um, start simple today, ask for help. And ask for help in, a way, in the ways that I'm telling you, uh, that, that, you probably, that you may have learned about through, this, uh, through the lecture here today. Um, you know, maybe ask, good, ask better questions. <laughs> maybe, I don't, maybe stop asking me about your 10th TikTok. Maybe ask me questions like this, that are like more interesting. Like Farza, where do you think I'm flopping? Be honest with you, where do you think I'm a flop? Like how, where do you think I'm failing? Uh, do you really think I'm gonna be anybody here in six weeks, like be realistic with me. Like give me the harsh answer, and I'll give you the harsh answer if you want me to be harsh. <laughs> I'll also give you the nice answer if you want to be nice. As far as, you know, what am I doing really well? How can I be better at that? I would love these questions, you know? I'm sure a lot of the team would love these questions because hey, we're watching you. We kind of have a sense of what you are doing well, what could be better. Um, hey, how can I improve doing X, Y, Z, you know? Uh, maybe, uh, like, may maybe that's an interesting question to ask as well uh, to a teammate, to a friend, to anybody, right? To even each other. These are interesting questions to just ask each other, you know? Um, I know some of you are kind of friends at this point, and so like uh, the, maybe you won't give each other the harsh realities, but I hope that you all can always be honest with each other. Um, and if someone asks you this question within Build Space, that you would answer honestly. But I know it's hard. Um, and yeah, or hey, reach out to someone some four to five steps ahead of you. You got nothing, you got nothing to lose. I remember I, uh, I would reach out to the Snapchat CEO in 2016, because I thought that guy was, I mean, as you can tell, I loved Snapchat, like for years. So I was like, my dream was to meet Evan Spiegel, you know, like Snapchat CEO, because I thought he was the sickest guy ever. And I would email him once a month forever. And eventually I got an email back saying, hey, uh, uh, I'm Evan's assistant, you can apply for our internship. And I was just like, all right, cool, thank you, I got a response, you know, after like years. Um, don't do that, you know. Uh, maybe reach out to someone that's a little bit closer to your uh, kind of radius. Uh, and yeah, be honest always, be clear with, uh, with your requests, and most importantly, know where you need help. That's the well, most important thing. You can't be helped unless you even know what you need help on. And uh, yeah, <laughs> that's the most important thing. And that's it. Any questions? Yeah, yeah. Do you have some thoughts on Yeah. Like, do you have some tips on that? For sure, for sure. Very tiring. Yeah, yeah. I think I talked about this with Bronson a little bit today, actually, where it's like everyone, like at Build Space especially, I'm, I especially and none of the teammates are trying to give you advice. And you should generally be wary of like people giving you advice. It's like you should always just take the other person's take. Um, and then from there, decide, do I want to go with that or do I not want to go with that? 
It's just up to you. And that's actually pretty hard because you have to kind of internalize uh, what they are talking about and decide for yourself. Uh, but yeah, I would never straight follow anybody's advice ever. Uh, you should kind of feel like you agree with it, you should feel like it makes sense, and then go for it. You know, again, for example, if I sit here and tell you, James, like, this thing you're working on, I don't know, maybe you should go, like, I don't know, start a concrete company. You know, like, I think, and I give you all the reasons why you should start a concrete company. At the end of the day, that's my take. Um, so always take things as takes. Uh, be very wary of advice, I've learned at least, yeah. Yes? It's a good question. Um, it depends. If you literally don't know them, and they seem like, for example, like I think uh, Samia's example. This guy seems big enough. Let's go back to him. Holy shit. <laughs> this guy seems big enough where he probably gets a lot of people hitting him up, I'm guessing, right? Um, so from this guy, you, I would just honestly try both. <laughs> like, I would always start with the simple, like, hey, uh, my name is X and this is where I'm at, and I really love your stuff, and I feel like I would appreciate if you would help me uh, with the specific problem I have, because I feel like you've done it before. And if you haven't, that's cool. I, th I think at the end of the day, most people are down to help people that uh, they see themselves in, right? Uh, so with this sort of person, it's like I would first see if you respond to something like that, and if that doesn't work, then just stay following up. There's no problem, you know? Uh, like maybe they drop a song, and then they left you on red. I love your, love your latest song, you know? Something as simple as that. Uh, that's happened to me many times, where like, I've, I'm trying to get into touch with someone, and um, they, don't, they leave me on red, because uh, they're, they're a big personality, but I'm just like relentless. I'm like, love your song, blah, blah, blah. Can I show you guys an example of this, actually? It's actually maybe kind of embarrassing. Um, it's actually very embarrassing. Who's, who remembers uh, Zane, the Smash Brothers player? You remember him? OK, I talked about him. Um, for the longest time, I really wanted to like help this guy uh, with his content. Um, like I wanted to help him, so that's already red flag. Uh, <laughs> but also, I just felt like I really wanted to like get deeper into the Smash Brothers scene, anyways, and I felt like he could help me with that because um, I wanted to do I wanted to do fun stuff. Like uh, I wanted to potentially, perhaps, like you know, commentate at Super Smash Brothers events. I thought that'd be, thought that'd be awesome, right? And I want to kind of show you here how badly this can go and how kind of shameless I really am. Um, this is my thread with him. Please, look at the dates. Feel free. November. Uh, February 18th, 2024. <laughs> now, if I can do this, uh, I honestly believe that you guys can do anything. Thanks, man. <laughs> so yeah, I started in 2017, right? Yeah, this is why he's sticky. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I think it's like that level of like relentlessness and just shamelessness that you kind of need sometimes. Now, honestly, that may have, getting, have started getting kind of annoying. But honestly, I really was just being like, yo, a great work, you know? I really was, like, truly. Huh? Space out really well. It wasn't weird. <laughs> Only every four months, you know? But no, I, I had that sort of interaction with, like, hundreds of people on the internet. Because most people will never reply. And I know that. Because uh, I'm also that guy that may never reply to a person who reaches out to me. Uh, so I know how hard it is. Therefore, you'll catch me in there. 20 times before I say, okay, maybe this, ain't, maybe this, isn't, maybe this isn't it, you know, so, yeah. So I'm uh, responding to people that want to reach out for help, because I got like a couple people sending me messages and yeah, I want to help with like your project is cool, like how would you like, so usually my answer is like, okay, but how can you help or what's your thing or like how would you like manage those people? Like, You're saying people want to help you? Yeah. I would just, my always thing where how many of you are looking for like potential partners for your projects, for what you're working on? I'm curious. Yeah, interesting you, for sure. It's very simple. Whenever, whenever, if, you're, if you're ever looking for someone who can help you, or who you're trying to help, um, or mostly people that are trying to help you, uh, like you're trying to find someone to essentially you know, take your project to the next level, or maybe, in this case, maybe be an engineer or something, 
Yeah, honestly, just do you like talking to them? It's like the most important thing. Again, a call within 30 minutes. Do you like talking to them? Um, if you do, then you should keep talking to them. Um, same thing with this. Like if, if uh, Samia reaches out to uh, Thalwinder, the artist, and Thalwinder ends up being like a kind of weird guy, not that fun to talk to, I don't know. Samia, you have no reason to keep talking to him. Same with Furkan. Like if Furkan was like not that fun to talk to day one, I'm not trying to talk to Furkan more. I'm like, okay, like I'm good. Uh, next. <laughs> uh, so it's okay. Sometimes that happens. You should kind of trust your gut. Definitely don't talk to people just because you want help from them and you don't enjoy talking to them. That's like the worst. It's very exhausting. Yeah. Just want to share something quick. There yeah. have been like four to five people who have reached out to me who are good at what they're doing. Yep. Who were just like, hey, we, we want to help you or whatever. And since then, I don't feel that I have used their help, but I just like talking to them. So we interact every once in a while on a call or like in a meeting. But I think there would be some really perfect time in the future when all those five people yeah. are going to have the perfect opportunity to help me and it's all going to come together. No, that's beautiful. I have a very similar philosophy with uh, another person, with this guy. Where is he? Oh, sorry, one sec. Let me, let me just plug in. Um, but overall, it's like I agree. Like That's actually a good way to think about it. You're trying to keep people around in your life. Um, because you, like because you like having them around mostly, right? Um, but also because, hey, maybe something can pan out in the future. Uh, and it's like a symbiotic relationship versus like just you polling. Me and Sharif are kind of funny because we always joke that in, uh, when we're 35, we'll, we'll start a company together. Um, and that's kind of become like very serious. It's become like a serious meme. Um, but it's funny because it's like we're so down to keep on pushing each other all the time um, as friends and as like partners. Um, because uh, we want to kind of uh, um, we want to kind of see each other succeed, you know. Uh, so yeah, and I have a, a lot. I have a lot of partners like that in my life, you know, uh, just like you. So it's good to have these types of people around, you know. For me, it's the team, kind of Jeff, Stubb, and Alec. These guys, they uh, they they keep me, they keep pushing me, you know. Uh, so yeah. Last question, Adil. Oh, question. I tell story? A story? I talked about how to like ask for help, right? I'll tell you, tell your story, Adil. Let's go. Now you know I'm part of SF too. I was talking to um, another SF1 dude, one of my buddies, uh, Sumi. Okay. And he's like uh, asking me for all this like help with the startup, and I'm like trying to just like listen, like I'm not offering help or anything, just like just trying to get my take. Yeah. And in the corner are like we're in the gaming room of Epic, and um, Furcon and Sharif are just like playing Smash. And Sumi, I like keep talking to Sumi, I'm like, Yo, why are you asking me for help? Like Furcon and uh, Sharif right there. And he's like, yeah. Oh, they're busy. Oh. <laughs> they're like playing Smash. They're playing yeah. Smash busy. And it's just like, I don't know. For me, that was like a moral to like not be scared of asking for help. Because yeah. even while we're talking, they're like listening to both of us. Yeah. And uh, every time they'd like pause, the, not pause the game, but like they'd be in like main menu select. And for a comp, be like, actually, you don't want to do that. You want to like do this. And like, it's just like, Subi's like, they're yeah. busy. Yeah. But really, they're like so interested in Subi's problem that they like actually want yeah. to help. They're like so directly applicable to like what he wants and he's like scared to talk about Yeah, yeah. For context, Subash was SF1, very uh, great, great hacker, very shy guy. And uh, he would be scared to even ask Amit for a new k code to the <laughs> building if it expired. So it's like, it's like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's tough. You have to understand that, that that's like where you got, you got to like find something within yourself to be like, it's all right. Like, I'm not going to ruin the other person's life by asking for help. Uh, worst case, they say no. And I think that's hard to get your head around, but as you do it enough, it becomes real, so. Um, cool. My moral of the story was like, yo, <laughs> that was a great moral though. Oh yeah? My moral of the story was like, uh, yo, like people have, like, are, that's what I've like, done before, like, really want to be involved with people who like, are doing it right now, like you said yep. earlier, you know? But like, Furcon's literally like, pausing the game to like help this kid, yeah. you know? <laughs> like, they just yeah. really love dealing with problems. It's like, they'll be happy to help. Cool. All right, everyone. Cool. Thanks. <laughs>